Yes, we are back right here on 1045theteam.com and the free 1045 The Team app. You go there. You go. You find all our podcasts on youtube.com slash team1045, sit in sports Eye podcast playlist, as well as on 1045theteam.com and the app is where you just research sit in sports Eye podcast or go to the podcast tab, sit in sports Eye podcast. I'll take you right to that playlist. Uh, and here we are with the NHL season just wrapped up this past weekend on Saturday. And it's actually a nice full thing. The full three days off for these guys before the the playoffs kick off on Wednesday. A local team of interest, the New York Islanders, under first year head coach Barry Trotz, did make the and defending Stanley Cup coach Barry, uh, winning coach, uh, coach with the Capitals last season, Barry Trotz. So very, uh, very looking for, very much looking forward to seeing the Islanders in the playoffs. Under Trotz, this unfortunately and right off the bat. Uh, I feel like they got the worst team. Well, obviously, anyone facing the Lightning is going to to have a tough time. But I really feel like the draw that they got is, is really tough, especially for a team that has a home ice advantage. Actually, if you look at all the teams that have home ice advantage, I'd probably say they got the worst matchup um, at the 2-3. And it makes sense. It's at the 2-3. Uh, but we'll talk about the other games as well. As the as I'm recording this, this is going to gonna happen and you'll probably listen to this after the national championship game, but the NCAA bracket officially over tonight with the championship game between Virginia and uh, Texas Tech. And we got another bracket to fill out. And I've actually seen some things in the NHL uh, about how maybe th- this is going to change. And I-, I thought I saw a suggestion of maybe Stanley Cup players like the Lightning will be able to pick who they face as opposed to, or I mean, I, I I don't know exactly how it would work. I think it comes comes down to more of this, the situation of um, maybe not this season, because right now you have the number one going up against the number eight, essentially with Tampa Bay versus Columbus. Like that's nothing that's that's different. Um, the Calgary Flames are going up; they're number one in the Western Conference in points at 107, and they get to play the Colorado Av- Avalanche. So I'm not sure this year there's any big time. Remember when it was like a, I think the Rangers were part of it. It was Pittsburgh. I think it was Washington uh, as well. They had the, all the best the club was Blue Jackets uh, as well. And I think I think that, you know, you, you had a situation where the two teams, the, the second team in the Metropolitan Division was kind of in a position to where they were a lot better than the first team of the, of the Atlantic Division. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe that makes sense in the future to, to think about how not being pigeonholed to play your uh, your division in the bracket. I personally have always liked it, this this format that they've used for a while now, and uh, I think it, I think it works. You know, ever since they made these into four divisions, and, and I think overall it works. And I think once you get Seattle in here, we'll see how that that goes up against it and how these things work uh, when you have a full 16 teams in each conference. But I just think it works for now. And I, I don't know how it would change if selecting the teams, and I, obviously I need to do better and researching that. But uh, I like, you know, the way it is now, and we'll see if it changes over the next few years or not. But uh, all I know right now is I have a bracket to fill out for the Stanley Cup playoffs, and this will not be that long of a podcast, but I'll do my best to give my insight. I'm not, once again, uh, I think I did this in the last couple of times I've done this, but I'm not, a, and I won't never pretend to be an NHL expert, but I know it enough to be able to make some picks, and I hope that you enjoy listening to this podcast. All right, let's get it going. Uh, we'll start with the Eastern Conference and the Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Columbus Blue Jackets, probably the easiest series to predict. Here's the thing, though, like Sergei Bobrovsky uh, is one of the best goalies I I look at him as one of the best goalies in the NHL um, personally. And, and even this year, uh, he wasn't the guy that, that won the best goalie award in the past. <sighs> Sorry, uh, diehard NHL fans. I don't have the, the name of that. I mean, the Venzina, Venzina award. Don't hold me to it. Uh, this year, 2.58 goals against average with the save percentage um, only being about 913. So he, he has been better and overall, Tampa Bay, though, uh, Andre Vasilevsky, he hasn't always been on point this year. And it really comes down to the the Nikita Kucherov and Steven Stamkos and all these guys who have been so good this season for Tampa Bay. Braden Point with 92 points. So you have as, as good of offense that you have, a 24-plus minus for Nikita Kucherov and 128 total points, probably going to win the MVP award this season. I, I just really think that they're going to be too much for a Columbus team that I don't think has enough firepower anywhere to score enough goals. Artemi Panarin is your best bet there. Um, he's going to need to have a, a heck of a series 
um, against the Tampa Bay Lightning. But I think the Lightning will win this pretty easily. They ran away. I think they had, didn't they have the most wins ever in a season or, or up there in 62. Uh, 128 points for sure was is a lot better than even the second most in the NHL. As the aforementioned Calgary Flames at 107. Uh, and the Boston Brewers at 1-7. So they just ran away with the NHL this season, and I think that the first-round matchup, no one's going to uh, contest other than maybe diehard Blue Jacket fans. They're, I let anyone win this one. I'll give a Blue Jackets one game. Maybe Bobrovsky steals a game here or there uh, in Columbus, and I'll say a, a, a five-game series, 4-1 victory for Tampa Bay as they'll move forward and face the winner of the Bruins in Maple Leaf series. And I mentioned the Bruins, second most points in the NHL this season, tied with the Flames. And they continue to be one of the best teams, uh, I think, this season. Uh, Brad Marchand, uh, one of the best. Um, Patricia Bergeron. They're just a really good team, Boston. And I, I, I believe with the aforementioned Bergeron and Marchand, along with David Pasternak, I think they're going to be a really good force to be reckoned with in the playoffs. And I think the second round matchup, but maybe this is where the selection would come into play in a different thing. Like you, you had to play the second best team possibly uh, in the next round. If you're the Lightning and you have as dominant of a season, you should maybe you should, should be able to pick who you get to face next. Um, if it, if the Hurricanes happen to pull it off, and I'll get to it in a little bit over the Capitals, you know the Lightning should be able to face the Hurricanes. Maybe maybe that's what the the, the proposition would be. And I have maybe no qualms with that off the bat. But Bruins Tampa Bay or should, Bru- Bruins in Toronto, excuse me. Uh, I I think this will be a good series. I, I do. I think Toronto. You know, you get. Uh, John Tavares, and let's be honest, it's kind of an underwhelming season uh, for John Tavares um, in his first year with the Maple Leafs. I, I think you could expect expect this to be gone a little bit better, but you still made the playoffs, and that's the important part. Um, overall, um, he played at all 82 games, only ended up with 88 points, uh, which is an even... <laughs> You know, it's it's top 16, but I, th- I, th- I still think it's an underwhelming season for a guy like John Tavares. Um, you add in Mitch Marner, it had, you had more points than him. I don't know if that is, is... I don't know what that says about Jeff Tavares. I think the 47 goals is what you really expect to get from him with Marner, obviously more on the uh, level on the assists there. Um, I think overall, though, you kind of... Yeah, sure, you look at what John Tavares was this season... I think you got to be a little bit more disappointed in, and obviously he was injured, but in, in Austin Meadows, um, I mean, 73 points is still a force to be reckoned with, 37 goals. This is a force to be reckoned with team offensively, but I think overall this is still a team that's uh, going to need to get a little bit better play um, from Frederick Anderson, and I, I don't really have that much of a belief in, in Anderson uh, going into the playoffs here. I, I think that he's ultimately going to be a guy that's good, not going to be good enough, and, and then you put go on the other end. Um, you have, I don't know exactly where Boston's going to go. I'm assuming they go to Rask. But I think that they, similar to the regular season, 46 uh, games for Rask, 40 games for Yaroslav Halak. I, I think you, you maybe you continue to to to, to alternate. And, and, I, and I believe that, that they should do that. And if they if they can, they can. I, I believe in that combination more than I do Anderson, even though the offenses are both for, good for both teams. I'm going to give the Bruins this victory in six games. I'm really looking forward to that one. That one's probably my favorite series in the first round. Um, overall, uh, Capitals and Hurricanes. I think the Capitals were trying to de uh, to hold their throne, and and the defending champions uh, are going to have a good time. I mean, I mean, we 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 already know about Alex Ovechkin and and how good he is. Fifty one goals this season, um, most in the NHL. So we know how good he is and, and how important he is, and and but. This is a team that struggled in the playoffs in the past. Uh, even with a bad year from Braden Olpe, uh last year they were able to get it done. But once again, not the best year from Olpe. And I guess I still have my uh, my reservations of whether this team is going to be able to do it on back-to-back seasons. Um, especially, well, I don't know. I just I just feel like I didn't get the, uh, um, a good enough vibe from them in the regular season in the games that I did happen to catch. But you know, John Carlson on the defense and 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 other. Uh, parts of this team I still feel like they're a team that was good in the playoffs last year they have the 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 experience and part of me doesn't want to forget the fact that they were a team that kind of stunk in the playoffs before last year but I, I can't I, I and I think that the even though the Hurricanes are a really uh scorching hot team if you will 
um, you know, winning a lot of games. Sebastian Ajo, Tivo Taravin. Taravinen. Man. If you didn't tune out already, you'd be like, this guy knows nothing. Can't even pronounce some of these names. And they're tough names, of course. Um, and, and of course, at the end of last uh, this past season, I know I heard from one Islanders fan that said he was glad that they got Pittsburgh, which I'll get to in a second, uh, because, you know, the Hurricanes finished the season pretty strong. I still don't believe that they'll beat the the uh, the, the Capitals here. I think I think it will probably go six games. I think you got to give the Hurricanes maybe some games here. Um, but I think over I think overall I have to go with the uh, the Capitals in this one pretty easily. Uh, Islanders Pittsburgh. I think this is the worst team you want to get. Jake Gensel. Uh, like I said, Gensel first, but of course Sidney Crosby, uh, Phil Kessel. Uh, Evgeny Malkin, this is a team that's really a force to be reckoned with year in and year out. And I know you're, you're you're looking at me and and you're saying, well, they still only ended up with 100 points, 44 wins, four wins behind the Islanders, three points overall. But I, I still believe this is a team that's a force to be reckoned with. They won two Stanley Cups in the last three seasons still, or four seasons still. Um, if you don't count this, if you count this season, they can win three out of four still. And this is still be a team that could be considered a dynasty. I think they're one of the most dangerous playoff, uh, teams in this playoff. So I think the Pittsburgh is going to take care of the Islanders. I, as much as I want to say that Eberle and and these other guys um, for you know Anders Lee and, and Robin and, and um, excuse me, <laughs> I didn't get up the goalies yet. Uh, you know, I got to get this job done. I just don't know if I can believe in it. And um, I know I want to, I, you know, I'll be rooting for the Islanders, of course, uh, local team and the, and the New York team. Actually, I've rooted for, for, for whenever I had to pick a New York team, but uh, Lee only had 28 goals. That's the most Matthew bars off 44 assists, the most points on the team, 62. I, I just think that there's not enough firepower here. on uh, what was a firepower led offense in Pittsburgh. So uh, give me the Pittsburgh, Penguins kind of quickly, but I'll say six games there as well. Um, let's move to the. Um, should I just stick with the Eastern Conference? All right, yeah. Tampa Bay Lightning versus the Boston Bruins. Real quick on this one, I think Tampa Bay is just too much against the Bruins. I think this will go seven games. I think you have to go with what they had this season, and I think the the, the having Kucherov, Stamkos at the top of there is going to give them a little bit more, even though you have really good players. Uh, on the Bruins side as well, and, and, and decent goaltending, I, I think that there's a chance that uh, Yaroslav Halak or can steal a game, and maybe that could be Game Seven um, if, if he gets that start, and, and if it's not Rask. But um, either either way, I have a lot of faith that one of the goalies could steal it from Pitts, from the Boston Bruins. But the firepower is just too much. There's too much um, of a, a record-setting pace kind of on the, on the offense with the Lightning that I have to stick with the Lightning here in seven games going in to the Eastern Conference uh, Finals in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, that will be up against either the Capitals or the Penguins. And I've already told you how much I think the Penguins are a dangerous team. I, uh, last year, the Capitals uh, took them out, um, if my memory is serving me correctly. And I think that for the second straight year, it'll be a funny, it'll be a fun matchup, but I'm going to have to go with Penguins in six games here. I think the Penguins will be too much for the Capitals. Braden Olpe uh, will be more of a deficiency this season, and uh, I think that they're looking at the Penguins going back to the Eastern Conference Finals again, uh, and a team that really is put themselves in position to win in year in and year out, and they're, they're you know, Sidney Cross is going to try to get that fourth Stanley Cup, and I think that there's going to be a good chance that he gets it this season and go up and face the Lightning in the in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I think that the Stanley Cup representative for the Eastern Conference will be the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm rolling with it. I do think that the Pittsburgh Penguins are going to be able to roll it out this season, and uh, I think that they'll go into seven games with Tampa Bay, take out the juggernaut that is the Lightning. And I have a lot of faith in Pittsburgh. If Matt Murray especially puts it together in the goal, no doubt in my mind this this team is still going to be able to get things done the way that they're constructed with Sidney Crosby, and he's not done yet. He's one of the best players um, in the NHL for sure. And even though he doesn't, you know, he doesn't put hasn't put up the flashy points uh, too much this season. Obviously, a hundred is, is nothing to write home or nothing to shake a stick at. That's a really good uh, season for him. Uh, I think that you're still getting outplayed by the Kucherovs and the McDavid's and the Patrick Canes this season. Even even Leon Drossel of Edmonton was better. So I, I do believe that there's maybe some sense of, you know, Crosby needs to uh, to win in the playoffs to prove how good he is, if that makes any sense. 
uh, and which he continues to do. And, you know, it was either him or Ovechkin for a very long time. It's not necessarily the case right now because you have a lot of stars and young good players in the league. But, uh, you know, Ovechkin got one last year, and I think that especially in that semifinal series where they'll face the Capitals, I think Crosby will be out on a mission and he'll get this Pittsburgh pitch Penguins teams back into the final, uh, especially because Malkin seems to be ready to go as well. Let's go to the Western Conference. Try to do this one a little bit quicker. Calgary Flames. Uh, the Flames surprised me this season. They continued to be good uh, you know, game after game, and, and, and it ran away uh, ultimately in the end with the division out there on the West Coast um, in the Pacific Division. Uh, the Sharks tried all they wanted, and I'll get to the My Sharks in a little bit here, but you know the Flames were a really good team this year, and I, I overall look at what they come into the playoffs with. Still led by Johnny Goudreau, most points and goals and assists. So he's going to be the catalyst for this team. Um, and David Riddich, I don't know if I really trust David Riddich in goal. So there's that kind of sense of, all right, wh- what are you going to get from this Calgary Flames team? And, and I've doubted them all year. Um, and I have to say that uh, I'm kind of doubting them this year. It doesn't mean I'll have them losing in the first round here. I do think that overall the Colorado Avalanche are going to need Miko Ronson in to, to get back healthy in order to be able to put up a fight in this series. I think Nathan McKinnon is obviously still really good there, but I, I got to go with the Calgary Flames winning this one in six games against the Colorado Avalanche. But if, if Miko Ronson comes, comes, comes back from his injury and he's ready to play, this could actually be a fun, uh, a really fun series. I think it'll be a fun series regardless, but the, the Avalanche are actually a, a good team. I think that, that uh, compared with the Columbus Blue Jackets, nothing against the Blue Jackets. Uh, they're a pretty good uh, final team to make it into the playoffs. I have I, I have actually a lot of faith in them um, going into this going into this playoffs. Um, I think you know I've always I, I continue to say it, you're as good as your goaltender uh, too. And for Colorado, Philip Grubauer hasn't been great, but but I, I think that you look at it and you got to say okay, he's ready to go. Um, and in in I I think he'll do a good job. Um, enough to, to where this will make actually a series as opposed to on the other end but I think that Tampa Bay Lightning will blow out the Blue Jackets out of the water but overall Calgary Flames on to the next round could face the winner of the San Jose Sharks and the Vegas Golden Knights the Golden Knights took out the Sharks last season uh, I don't necessarily believe in the Knight, Golden Knights as much um, this season and maybe I'm you know I'm a Sharks fan um, and they were really good last year you know Vegas was was so good they made it you know lost, lost in the finals and they they're just a really good team last year. Uh, and I doubted them a little bit against the Sharks. I was like, all right, we, we can get this thing done. And I'm doubting them a little bit more now. This is not the same thing. James Neal is gone. Um, and overall, I look at this team and I say, okay, what is new? What, what is still there? Uh, William Carlson, of course he's still there. Um, Jonathan Marshall is doing really, really good things. Riley Smith, Alex Took. But I just don't know if I, I trust them enough. And, and and I know you look at the goalie, Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, in 61 games this year, 35 and 21, uh, with the goals against average. Um, well, goals against per game. It's not, like, not goals against average. But um, but this year, uh, 2.51 goals against. That's that pretty good. And we know his pedigree in the playoffs. And I, I can't deny that. Uh, as a Sharks fan, but four players with 30 or more goals in a single season. First team to do that uh, is since 2008-2009. San Jose Sharks are a really good team. Joe Jumbo Joe Thornton and, and possibly his last one of his last uh, runs in the, in the playoffs, but you can't deny Brent Burns, Vander Kane, um, bringing in uh, Eric Carlson this year to go along with Brent Burns uh, defensively. And they just continued. They got uh, William Nyquist. Uh, as well, so they they got better and better, and they've gone all in and on it this season. Uh, unfortunately, you don't have the same Martin Jones from two years ago that got you to where you know to the playoffs, and that's that hurts you a little bit. Uh, but when you go out and you sign Kane to the deal that you signed him to, and and you make sure Kotor stays put, and, and Tomas Hurdle is having the season that he's having, and then you go out on the trade deadline and you go out and you bring in um a player. Of Nyquist's uh, Gustav, did I say William Nyquist? Gustav Nyquist's caliber. I just think it's so important to to what they did, and and I, and I know I got the name wrong, but he has been so important to them um, coming over in that trade from Detroit. And I just think that when you when you really go all in like this, 
and you're the San Jose Sharks and you still have the veteran presence of Jumbo Joe and you have Timo Maurer, a mayor who ha- continues to be impressive uh, as well, under known with Don Skoy and, uh, on the third and fourth lines, Mark Edward Vlasic as well. You just have so much depth on this team. This looks so good to me. And uh, I think overall, um, like I said, you had four goal scorers of 30 or plus, plus goals uh, in Pavelski, Tomas Hurdle, Timo Meyer, and Evander Kane. It's just so impressive. And I am talking about Logan Couture, who had 27 goals. Um, and a guy like Brent Burns, who who had 83 points this season, only 16 goals, but it's so important on the power play. So I think the Sharks team is going to be really, really good. I think they actually won the series in five games. I think they'll be that good. The problem is, like I said, Martin Jones is not playing the same way he had a, a seasons ago, and I have a lot of concern about him this season, especially when you put into perspective that the goals against average was 2.94. So I just think that he, he needs to be better. Um, that's the one issue. But I think offensively, this is a team that can really go to toe with anybody, including, yes, Tampa Bay Lightning and the Pittsburgh Penguins and, and Boston Bruins and the Calgary Flames and the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, so, of course, I want to have them going on and facing the Calgary Flames in the semifinals. Uh, before I predict that game, let's talk about the, the National Predators who are continuing to be an impressive team year in and year out. Pekka Rene is one of the best uh, goaltenders in all um, of the NHL, in my opinion. Uh, still only number 10 in the goals against average, but still very impressive to me uh, this season. Uh, past that, P.K. Subban. Of course, you're, you are you have that guy doing great things as your defender defenseman. Um, continues to make this team as good as it is. I think there still comes, still comes uh, still some concern, for me at least, about where you go um, offensively enough to get the job done. Uh, Victor Arvidsson, Ryan Johansson is obviously really good, but I, I think that the lack of the star power to me um, from a top guy um, kind of hurts. Um, and overall, and in, in, I mentioned the Sharks having 30-plus goals, and uh, Arvidsson had 34, but past that, where are you going to get your goals from? Um, and And... and Sure, you you have uh, Philip Forsberg and Craig Smith, but only one thirty-plus goal goal scorer. That that kind of, and like I guess that only one. I mean, the Sharks did something that the team hadn't done in over ten years. But I still believe that this uh, team is is going to get the job done with P, with PK and and, uh, and 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 Pekka Rene. But I don't believe, and we'll get to it in a little bit that they'll be able to do enough. And I think when you have when you when you overall look at things. And you see what Ben Bishop had done this season, and and he seems to be ready to go when the season when the playoffs start. Coming off two his last two outings, including his last one, where he let up no goals. I think it's going to be tough uh, for Nash for for Nashville to to run Dallas out of the water. You know they still have really good players in Tyler Seguin, Jamie Ben. And so I look at them overall and I say, wait a second, this is actually a good Dallas Stars team. Um, uh, At the risk of going too chalky, I would love to pick the Stars here, but I think they'll take them to seven games, actually. Um, I do, and I think it'll be a good series, but I'll pick the Predators overall to get the job done in the end. Uh, even though Ben Bishop, like I said, has looked really, really good, and Jamie Ben, John Klingberg, and, and Seguin are are really good at the top of the, that uh, the lines there. But overall, I have to stick with the Predators because of how good they have been. And the last series to pick the two three Winnipeg Jets versus St. Louis Blues. Same reason why I've, I'm very impressed by Ben Bishop. Uh, I'm very impressed with Jordan Bennington did this season with 1.89 goals against average 90. Uh, not as good a save percentage as Ben Bishop, but. He's still been very impressive. And I'm going to go with the Blues here in seven games over uh, a good Winnipeg Jets team. Um, like I said, they're a good Winnipeg Jets team. Um, the young uh, the young lad, young lad in in goal there, um, you know, he, he's gotten better. And, and Connor Hellebuck uh, has gotten better there. Um, and I know you still have uh, Blake Wheeler, doing great things and, and, and he having 71 helpers this season. Uh, but I have my concerns. Jacob Truba, uh, Mark Shafile, Truba, the, the best, the good def, uh, defenseman along with us at Bufflin, but Shafile and uh, Kyle Connor. Are, I mean, 
Patrick Lane and how good he has 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 been in his young career. I just still have a lot of concern though with them being able to get it done. And I, I gotta go with uh Bennington in the blues of Vladimir Tarasenko as well. So I'm gonna go with the blues in the upset there. Um Sharks versus the Flames. My Sharks, I think, will win in six games. Uh, I think the Predators will beat the Blues in six games. Uh, and I think overall, the Sharks Predators again in the playoffs. I'm going to go Sharks. I think it's a, either way, you think I, you'd have a rematch of Pittsburgh versus somebody. I'm going to go with my Sharks being the rematch. They're just too much. They have too much. This is the year that they need to get it done. I'll have them winning against the Predators in six, and I'll have them winning against the Penguins in the Cleveland Cup at seven. Call it a homer pick, but this is the year. They went in all this year. They went in for it. They went for it, and I think the Sharks are going to win it all this year for the first time in franchise history. It's so important for them to have won this thing, uh, to, to, to win something. I mean, they got to the first Stanley Cup a couple years ago, and now they need Martin Jones to step up and jump up. Joe needs to get a Stanley Cup. I, I just think that this is the this is the team that has so much that can think that can beat you on every single line. And Tomas Hertel to me is the is the difference maker of what, how important he is on different lines. But I just really, 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 really believe that this, they've they've gotten so much. Gustav Nyquist, that they went all in for it. Evander Kane was a big trade last year, and they locked him up there, and they didn't lose anybody. That that was important. That too important. Uh, Martin Jones is going to need to step up, um, and there is some concern there. But we saw Braden Olpe not be great for the Capitals last year, and they got the job done. That's why I'm picking the San Jose Sharks because even if Jones isn't great, I think that they're 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 going to be good enough to get it done with the offense that they have. And and, and the same goes for anyone else though too, because the Penguins are that good. The Tampa Bay Lightning's offense is really good. So is Brad. Bad Martian and, and all that. Um, and But I think overall the Sharks are going to be able to get the job done in the West because I think they have the best and by far, not, maybe not by far, but t- I think no doubt in my mind that they have the best offense in the West. Uh, and I think whether they face it's the Lightning, the Penguins, and like I said, I've, 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 I have the Penguins or Bruins or whoever they're playing, or even if it's the Maple Leafs, I think that, that it will be a fun Stanley Cup and that they'll get the job done there. Uh, but I think overall it's going to be Eastern Conference is going to be better to watch. I picked the Penguins to get there, but it could be really fun to watch any of those teams that I mentioned, even the Capitals as well with the offense that they have. And that's why I have such uh, concern about Robin Leonard uh, of the Islanders going up against uh, any of these teams, especially the, Pe- uh, the Penguins early on. And whether it's Leonard or it is Greece um, this season, um, they're both been really, really good. And I, I, I don't know if I believe that that they can uh, not get the you know could, could could be good enough to get the job done there uh, in terms of uh, being able to to stop the firepower of the offenses. But I think that I'm going with what we saw last year and how good that the offense with Ovechkin and and Tom Wilson and and um, T.J. Oshie was for the Capitals last season. I'm saying that this is gonna, that's what's going to win it this year. It's going to be an offense, and it's, no one went more all in on an offense with Carl Eric. I didn't mention Eric Carlson yet. Uh, well, I had earlier, but, but uh, where I was going, but how good this offense is, I think they really went for it this year, and, and it, it's really Stanley Cup or bust. And I think that the Sharks will win it this year. Thank you for listening to this edition of the Sin Sports Side Podcast. We're brought to you by DeAndrea's Pizza. I just went to DeAndrea's Pizza this past weekend uh, in Saratoga Springs, located on 33 Caroline Street in Saratoga Springs. And there's also one on 645 Route 9 in Gansler. But I went to one in Saratoga Springs. I ordered a nice chicken parm sub. It was so delicious. I also ordered a calzone for my dinner later. And that was really good with buffalo chicken in it. So they really get the job done. You can order. If you don't feel like calling in and ordering, you can order from Grubhub. It's just so convenient there as well. And they'll deliver it to you. It's just a great place. DeAndrea's Pizza. Um, the, we wouldn't be able to do this podcast or do our Sunday sit in sports side Sunday show without DeAndrea's Pizza. So thank you for listening to this preview of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I hope you enjoy the hockey because playoff hockey is the best hockey. And once again, I want to thank you for sitting sports side right here on 104.5thesteam.com.